Now I'm not trying to be rude But hey pretty girl I'm feeling you The way you got me on the And your ass driving legs is cool I forgot the words because I ain't heard that song in so long But those are the poet poetic words of Mr. R. Kelly And uh, he's going through a lot right now And we used to be W.R. Kelly Radio for the past two years so we at least had to talk about him one time because there's so much going on R. Kelly being behind bars so I'm Money Green chilling with Shays on the mic and we are Lyrics and Lies and we gonna bring some truth to a lot of these lies that have been out there and I think most people know a lot of the truth whether or not they want to realize it but it's just all types of craziness it's, it's, it's a Oh man, this is a crazy world out here. So, the new documentary. R. Kelly, new documentary, Surviving R. Kelly Part 2. What's it called? The It's called... Um, the Reckoning. Uh, the Reckoning. Is that it? Yeah. Lifetime said, you know what? We had the largest viewership during this documentary last year. So, we're going to do it again. So, every January, we're going to do... Uh, <laughs> A documentary on R. Kelly and how bad of a person he is. I I didn't feel too good about this one. Um, before, I didn't feel good about the first one, but I understood the first one and, and it shared a lot of light on what was going on. So it, it brought some clarity. But this one? Well, before we get into the reckoning, I want to talk about what we what we just witnessed a couple of days ago with the girlfriends. Well, that's part of the reckoning. Right, but the, but that's not in the reckoning itself. But it's the reckoning after the reckoning. Right, it's the reckoning. My bad. It's the wreck reckoning. after the reckoning. Right. So you want to talk about the wreck then the reckoning. <laughs> we want to talk about the wreck wreck before the reckoning. No, let's talk about the reckoning so we can get Into our the, special guest on. Okay, so, yeah, because we so, do have a special so, guest So today. we'll talk about the reckoning and then we can tie in the other stuff in there because since she got it. Right. Yeah. So we want to, we, we, we want to, this is the first time on our show this year that we have a special guest. You, you're not going to introduce her now, are you? Yes, I am because I want, I want to get right into it. But you didn't, you got to have a question or something to ask her. Well, we are going to get asked a question, but I do want to introduce her first. Well, since we're talking about R. Kelly, we had to find somebody with the same name. So, to Lyric and Lie Land out there, this is it's Our a- Kelly. Our Kelly. Not R. Kelly, but Our Kelly. O-U-R space Kelly. Coming to you live from North Carolina. What's up, Our Kelly? Well, that don't have me equating with this man here. <laughs> hey, y'all. But that, that is your name, right? Kelly. Well, I mean, I go by Kells. Oh yeah, you, you do know. go by Kells. We can't call oh, you. Ke- yeah. We can't call you Kells and call him Kells. <laughs> and then people gonna think we're interviewing him in in jail. <laughs> okay, so Kelly, um, what is your take on the reckoning? But pretty much the same information. I was a little bit disappointed about the beginning. Um, episode where they were explaining about his childhood upbringing and the things that happened to him physically and stuff like that. I just feel like they didn't go deep enough if they were going to use that as an explanation for why he's doing what he's doing, or allegedly. <laughs> um, so I, I, that, I was a little bit disappointed by that. Um, but I, I really don't think that this is any new information. Um, I just think that, you know, it's, it's time for this man to, you know, that's up. Um, I agree with um, Kelly on the beginning part of it, that they, to me, they only spent like seven minutes about, um, it seemed like seven minutes <laughs> on his upbringing and what happened. Um, I don't think they really dissected it that much of his upbringing. I think they glossed over it and went back into the other uh, ladies who have went who have been with R. Kelly and the things that R. Kelly did, did to them. We're talking about the man that molested him. So the first time they talk about his sister molesting him. Now they're talking about the neighbor that molested him. So I'm confused. 
he got was his sister and the neighbor the neighbor molested him first yeah, no, I my bad. That, they didn't say who it was in this episode. Yeah, they said it was that man named Mr. Mr. Jimmy or whatever his name was. I forgot his name, but remember they say he would pass out fruit and everything and candy to the kids. And they went back to his house and he pulled his he went into the back room and came out naked. And R. Kelly and his brothers bumped into each other trying to run out. Well, evidently, <laughs> yeah, he, see? he did say that, but as far as the family member is concerned, no, they, they didn't specify who that was. They I did. Mean, I think it's they, a sister. That, that, it was a sister. It's sister. They showed they showed his sister's picture, and they said his sister molested uh, two of them. Because that's why R. Oh. Kelly was saying that I'm not a virgin. I've been with a girl. And they said who? And he was like, our sister such and such. And they said, what? That don't count. And then the brother yeah, said, yeah, and then the brother was like, wait a minute, she molesting you too? Well, I remember the brother talking about it on a show. Right, that's he the was sister. Talking, right, he was talking about it on a different show about the sister, but he, but this never happened to the older brother. It just right. happened to, um, what's his name, Carrie? Carrie. Carrie and Robert. Carrie and Robert. At that right. time, because I think Robert and R. Kelly are two different people. So Robert... Because yes. he, he 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 sees himself as two different people. Carrie said that when he saw him on the poster, he said, "That's R. Kelly by then." Well, no, I I agree with that because I see myself as two different people. Ah, we know. I'm serious. When I look on YouTube and I see Money Green and Shades in the Mic, I was like, "Yeah, them two people there, they some motherfuckers." <laughs> you so stupid. So I know where you coming from. <laughs> Because when you and me go on tour, we gonna have it like that. Yeah, we but, have, I, but I have, hope that I hope my um uh, that I'm still the same person, even though I'm shades on a mic and who my real name is. I, just, I don't want us to be two different people. I just hope our groupies aren't over so seven. So you have, so you're saying he has dual personalities? That's what you're saying. That's what I think because the brother I don't know said. If you remember, that's what the brother said. Remember when he was t- talking about him and Robert talking, and he said that that R. Kelly right there, he is something else. And he said, well, isn't that you? He said, nah, R. Kelly got me doing some things. Mm. So he sees himself as two different people. Two different people. Right. So that's what Carrie said. With the performer and then the regular person. Yeah. But I think he's taking it literally. I want to. (laughs) There's only one person in jail. (laughs) <laughs> so, right, <laughs> One, Robert both and Kel. Both of them in jail. Both of them in jail. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. So, so I don't know if they're fighting with each other in jail about who is really <laughs> going to be on who, trial who, who or not. In jail. <laughs> who's representing in jail? <laughs> <laughs> it could be R. Kelly who's going to be on the stand. I don't know. Okay. But <laughs> anyway, um, I, I think it just brought out some other ladies. Who have been, um, you know, molested by R. Kelly on the second How many? reckoning? Was it one or it two? Was, yeah, it showed, it, it, yeah, it showed three. I, I, three new I was girls. The, 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 the hairdresser young lady. That was really profound. All right, um, all right. Talk about her, Kels. Our Kelly. She she really, you know, sealed the deal for me. Um, because the level of manipulation that he did with her was just, it was terrible. And you could see that it still affected her to this day um, because she really thought that this was somebody who was, that she trusted and that she confided into things that happened to her. He, 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 people like him can spot people who are wounded a mile away, just like the girl said in the video. Um, and she was one of those people. He, she didn't even really have to tell him the things that happened to her. He already knew it. That's why he allowed her to be in his circle. And then he let her, you know, go on and think that they were cool and brother and sister until they wasn't. You know, until, you know, he wanted, you know, something from her. I think and that's he, his M.O. He took it. Right. He took it. Mm-hmm. He took it. He took it her trust and stomped on it. It, it, That was really revealing to me. I don't know if you saw that episode. I Mm -hmm. I think it's the third one. Yeah. I don't know which one it was. Uh, that's his M.O. You though. Really see that. Yeah, that's his M.O. That's she what he does. One, and then she was the one who 
she was the one who initiated, you know, the filing of charges. She went through hell to try to get this man, you know, looked at by the police. She went to court. She did everything the way people say we're supposed to do things and things like this happen to us. And she was still victimized by the police. And you're right. Yeah, she, she she did everything that she was supposed to do. She she she, you know, threw her whole life out there. And these people still didn't believe what she was saying because of who he was. Mm-hmm. So it's it, a story. I, now that her story was really a reckoning because nobody had ever heard from her before. And it's documented in the court that she filed these charges and all of this type of stuff. Yeah. Well, so that was really. <laughs> well, that young lady before her. No, no, stay on her for a second. Stay what on her you want to say second. on the... Um... Real quick, the hairdresser. Okay. One thing that this documentary, the, the part two, it bothers me because it mixes up the underage abuse with any sexual abuse or any domestic violence. And it's almost as if every time they show a woman, they put it across or they make it seem as if they were underage. They don't actually come out and say it every time, but it's sort of a a haze or a little film that they put over everything. Underage, underage, underage. And then they tie in these older women who get abused at the same time, but they're two different crimes. So I hate when they mix up the the different kinds of abuse and put them all under one window. Because I, I would- Coming from a woman's perspective, it's all abuse to us. No, but but hold on, Kels. Check check this out. They have to. Yeah, but check this out. Check this out, our Kelly. I think that it would be stronger if they were to say, "This is domestic abuse. This is sexual abuse." Make sure those are totally different from everything else, because a lot of times people don't really realize that. Is sexual abuse or domestic abuse. A lot of people don't. So a lot of people uh, who were talking about this documentary were saying, yeah, there's another underage girl, underage this. And it's like they're just totally overlooking any crimes he did to grown ass women. And a lot of, I think a lot of men out here are getting away with some of the things that they're doing in relationships because it's not being brought up as domestic violence, whether they're being smacked, uh, sex forced upon them, you know what I'm saying? Like the uh, the hairdresser was saying, he forced her to, to uh, give him oral sex and things like that. That's that's mm-hmm. rape. That's rape. It's a it's raping of a woman that's of age, but it's still rape. But I don't hear right. rape being brought up in this special unless it's statutory rape. So that's what I'm saying, just differentiating the, the crimes that he commits. I think that, I think that, that you're absolutely right. I think that speaks to society's view of domestic violence and we all know that it is not treated as severely as a pedophile or a child molester is I mean because when women go and try to report these issues and they're you know not protected by the system then clearly you know Nobody's taking it that serious. Go, that's your husband. Go, go, go head on back home to your husband. You know what I'm saying? What did you do to make him beat on you? What did you do? You know, that type of stuff, victim shaming that goes on, speaks to why I feel like they probably have to, you know, muddy the waters when it comes to these two different types of abuse, if that's what you want to call it. And I think that people are more appalled by the fact that he would do this to young girls than they are if he would do it to older women. Because the first thing they're going to say, well, you you grown woman, you, you you let him do that to you, or you did this or you did that. The older women had a more difficult time telling their story because of that kind of thinking, that you a grown woman and you decided to, to, to sleep with this person or deal with this person. So you you have a hand in how you got treated this way when that's not how it is. Because that's what they do to domestic violence victims. You had a hand in why you were in this situation. 
And that's why it's not looked at as severely as if it was a child under the impression of an adult doing these types of things. You see what I'm saying? It's like with the girls now. Now the, now one of the young ladies that he's been dealing with all the time wants to come out and say, well, you've been dealing with me as a minor. I'm going to press charges on you. So yeah. now, what do we believe now? Do we believe her as an adult saying this or do we believe her as a child saying this? Yeah. Because you, now we don't know what to, we don't know what to make of what you're saying because you were complicit up until this point. There so you go. How do how do we decide that? You know what I'm saying? It's 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 mucky. It's nasty. And that's the word for this episode. All the, way around. the word for this episode is complicit. But everything you just said is on the mark, is on the money. But there was one woman who I wasn't feeling sorry for. And, you know, and it goes to what you were saying, just because she's an adult doesn't mean that you shouldn't or that she couldn't be abused or whatever. But she says something in this, in this documentary. I can't recall which episode. She said R. Kelly told her to do something sexually that she didn't want to do. And he said, okay, well, if you don't want to do it, all right, you can just go ahead and I get somebody else to do it or something like that. And, and then she said, okay, I'll do it. And she went and did it. Now, that right there was her conscious basically telling her not to do it. And she openly refused to do it. And he said, okay, you don't have to do it. And she didn't want to be replaced. She didn't want to leave the house. She didn't want to change her lifestyle. So she went ahead and did it. That was a conscious effort. And I don't think all of them are like that. But I think a great portion of the adults in that house, because I know one said she left and came back. It was like in one day she said I went went out and went to the store and I did that. Is this the reckoning or the first um one you talking about? It's I think the, that's the, the I no, think, no no I'm I, talking about what Marlon what MJ with um Money Green is talking about. I that's think, the, that's not um the reckoning. I think she was in this episode, oh, but okay. she said it somewhere else. But it was the same woman. Oh, okay. But she said she left or whatever. But basically she was saying we could come and go, but she didn't say we could come and go. She just said so. I left and I did this. And I did that, and then I came back. So it's not like for some of them, it's not like they were being uh, refrained from leaving or whatever. Some of them had freedom to leave, but they were just enjoying that lifestyle. Well, yeah, because even the second lady, and I can't even think of her name, and she knew R. Kelly for a long time, and his M.O. was acting like a brother. It's being that brother figure. Um, to them because she didn't do nothing with him for several months. Now I'm talking about after he pulled the dick out. Well, yeah. Well, my point, after the dick came out. My point is that his mo is to start everybody off at that, and all of those, and because they called her the cable girl. She, she was a connect. She's the one who connected him to all the young girls, yeah. right? So all the young girls came in and out. Well, guess what? As teenagers and young girls, that's what you're going to do. You're going to you're excited about being around a celebrity. And of course, and then these again are people from broken homes. So let's ask Kel, our, our Kelly, if back in high school, say you were in 10th grade. No, nah, that's not happening. Hold on. Our, hold on. Years. Hold on. Say you're in 10th grade, our Kelly. And you got confronted by Gerald Levert. Jail Levert told you to come on backstage and come to his house. What would you have done? <laughs> I don't. I can't. I can't say. I. Can't, I, I don't. I don't know. Or I Key mean, Sweat. It could be Key Sweat too. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I wasn't like into celebrities like that. I can't see me, you know, wanting to go that far with someone that's just me I, but I, to speak to a larger picture and about these girls is that and even these adult women is that and and you know Oprah has done shows on this too I hate to bring her up but she has done shows on these pedophiles and these these, these domestic violence um, uh, survivors and abusers is that they manipulate in such a way that you do make those kinds of decisions for yourself that you wouldn't normally do if you hadn't been groomed to think that way. You know, I mean, it is, it is, it, he, 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 for lack of a better term, he mind fucks these people before he even gets to abuse their body. And that's what they all do. 
Well, that's, he do that through the music. Him. He does that through the music. Yeah, before even meeting, before even meeting them, he does that with the music. Whether or not we realize that a lot of us are being mind. Well, he's the Pied Piper. But a lot of us are being <laughs> mind f by our favorite entertainers. Well, he's the Pied Piper. Then he say that, and it's through his music. That's what happens. Yes, but who's your favorite singer? Um, now? Right now, who's your favorite singer? I I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have a favorite. Kels, who's your, who's your favorite I, I, singer? My favorite rapper. Who's your favorite rapper? Drake. You, you know that Drake, but Drake not gonna give me like that because I'm the older one. But hold on, but but hold on. Like... True, but but <laughs> but, but he mind. That's so mean. You can't be manipulated. <laughs> right, he mind bones you, whether or not you realize it, and whether or not he wants to take advantage of it. But there's something in you that really caters to him or well, leaves yeah, on him. Well, yeah, it does. I like, the, the, lyrically, it, he caters to me. But that's me as a person. I just think from a bigger perspective uh, to generalize it, to say that that is a reason why these young ladies and women got themselves in this situation is the same is to say that they deserve the abuse. In my, and, that, and I don't think that's fair to say for these women, even though they acting like asses on TV now, but they still don't deserve the abuse. When somebody manipulates you to a point where you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do, that is abuse. He has abused these girls and, ha and, and has made them think, brainwashed them, for lack of a better term, to think that that what he is doing to them is okay, and that and that and that is why it's criminal. Yeah, and because he's you, promising them things. You, 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 you can't do that to people. You shouldn't do that to people. Mm -hmm. People should have their own free will to say, yes, I want to perform oral sex on you when I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Not because you're telling me to do it and you sitting on it and all that. I'm not doing that unless I want to. Why would you want somebody to do something that you that they don't want to do? How do you enjoy that? That's the sickness. Tell him, Kale. He's sick. He's yeah. sick. That's and plus, he was pro he was promising them girls careers. And all this stuff for a young girl that's tempting and like, oh my gosh, I'm with R. Kelly. Um, I do have to agree with, I think the level of, depending on where you are when it comes to celebrities or anybody. Um, like, yeah, I like Drake. I like him lyrically, but I'm not going to be going, uh, I'm not going to go that far with letting him manipulate me to that point because I'm not on that level to like him overboard like that. I just, I just admire his, his music and stuff like that, but it's not to the point of, oh my gosh, he's going to, he, he, he's going to promise me a record deal. Or if I get with this person, he, I'm, I'm aspiring to get something from him. So at the beginning, a lot of the, the, some of the ladies and he promised them stuff. So therefore they stuck around because of a promise too. That's another you gotta reason. Remember that That's they stuck reason. around for a promise because they he said he was going to make them stars. He was going to have them singing all this stuff. They had a goal in mind. Yeah, a goal. Yeah, but at what point do you say? At what point do you say if you are an adult? You know what I'm saying? After you say, mm -hmm. okay, I've had enough. I've had enough of waiting. I'm going to go see somebody else or try try it another route. But when you're a child, you don't think and that's that. what you're being presented with. You don't even have the capacity to make those types of decisions for yourself. I mean, he, he and he knows that. He knows that these are children. And these older women, I think he just sprinkled them in on a humble just so he can say, oh, I don't just mess with young girls. You know, I, I, I think that's a, that's a whole other level of manipulation. Now, I don't think that was it. I think the older woman was what you said earlier, that he saw somebody that was wounded or insecure, and he brought them into the web. So I don't think it was about them them being old or being a cover. I think he saw them as being weak and someone that he controlled, and he brought them in one by one. The older women were, were, were wounded women, too. That's what I'm talking about. That, that's what I'm talking about. You said that yeah. earlier, and I'm saying I'm, I think he brought them in because they were wounded. Yeah. Not not to cover for him messing with young girls. I think whenever he mm -hmm. finds somebody weak, he's going to grab them. But when he finds somebody yeah. under 18 and weak, those are even better than those that are weak and under 35. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. I think that I, 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 I think wait. he just so happened to prefer younger girls. Yeah. yeah. 
So we appreciate you coming on. We know we know you got to get back and talk to uh, the other radio stations, our Kelly. But thank you so much for your lyrics and lies debut. You want to say anything else? You want to close it out with something? Thank you for having me. Did you want to say anything else before you leave? No, that's it. Well, thank you. We appreciate having you on. Thank you. Yeah, we, we're going to make sure you be spelling the name Bye. right, too. Yeah, she didn't know what she was talking about. But look, no, I'm, I'm joking about that. She she made some great points. Actually, all her points were, were pretty great. So yeah. um, we're going to wrap this up. Maybe not in a bow. <laughs> yeah, but it's a wrap anyway. It's a wrap, though. So please like and subscribe. And uh, we'll get back to y'all and probably probably tomorrow when we drop another video. So that's it for me, Money Green. Shades on the mic and we out.